one sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see he clutched his old rags and shivered in the shadows then jesus came and bade his darkness flee It's time to open the Word once again with Evangelist Lester Roloff on the Family Altar Program. Glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. I want you to turn in your Bible to the first book of the Bible, chapter 6. You recognize that chapter as the chapter that introduces a man to the name of Noah. Now, before I read the scripture, I want you to turn the book of Matthew with me. I mean, we're going to start off, and then I'll show you where we're living. Chapter 24, Matthew, chapter 24. He's talking about the coming of our Lord. Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered in to the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them away. Didn't say that. Took them all away. That means everybody outside the ark was lost, destroyed, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. What, therefore, or you know not what hour your Lord doth come, but know this, that if the good man of the house, and every man ought to be a good man, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh, shall find so doing. May we pray. Our Father, we confess to thee that we do not know the exact hour, the minute, the second, the day, or the month, or even the year, but we have every reason to believe that our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. And we must be approaching that blessed and wonderful event, we believe that surely this must be Noah's day. Now then, Lord, help us to find our way into the ark by faith, knowing that the ark is the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the message come clear and plain and powerful, and I pray that folks will be saved tonight. Thank you, dear Lord, for changing the message tonight. I believe this is it, and we'll trust thee to bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Daughters were born unto them. Chapter 6, verse 2. That the sons of God, S-A-W, saw. That's one of the signs. It'll be a sin age. Everybody's looking. When I was born... I never dreamed they'd ever concoct a picture show for the living room of the den, but they did. I never knew you could just go into your house and sit down and turn on Hollywood any time during most of the day and the night. I didn't know they'd make that invasion. Here's your products out here. Here's your products here. These are typical products of Hollywood. That's what they got right in the living room. They didn't have to go off from home to backslide and get in trouble. They got in trouble in their home. 
And we've tried to make that the bait. Preacher's wife said one day, why, my television set, Baptist preacher's wife said, my television set is my babysitter. As soon as breakfast is over, I set my baby in front of the television set, and it watches it all day long. Reckon, reckon what preacher ever got a permit to get a television set and run a picture show? Sure different from the preachers that were preaching when I started preaching 40 years ago. Hey, y'all just breathe normal out there because this is the truth. Every time you mention something everybody's guilty of, people begin to quit breathing, look like. Begin to draw up and swell up. Come on, you might as well face it, boys. We are to blame. We've let the devil and hell and Hollywood invade our homes. And look what we've got left now. The sons of God saw, the daughters of men, that they had great character. No, it didn't. They were fair, F-A-I-R. What the average parlance would say, they were good-looking, physically attractive, and that's it. And if I wanted to be cheap, if I wanted to be cheap, I'd use some other words, but I don't even like to use them in the pulpit. I've heard so much about it. And so he said... Uh, they chose them, what? Wives, W-I-V-E-S, wives. That's more than one, isn't it? Of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. <laughs> Yet his days <laughs> shall be a hundred and twenty years. I preached to the boys on God's withholding tax. He said, because of your sins and iniquities, I've withheld the blessings from you. Talk about withholding taxes. We're facing them. God said over there, because you haven't lived right, I've withheld the showers. That's withholding taxes. We're paying withholding taxes now in this country because we've not let him make the decisions. Ever giant? Are we there now? Giant! Who you think took off on that 40-story building from Cape Kennedy? They were giants. Paul, oh, I guess they, they weren't spiritual giants because they didn't have a prep meeting. Are you listening? You say, that was a miracle. That wasn't a miracle. That's a man-made house, and they blasted it off with physical science. Wasn't anything supernatural about that, and there wasn't a man that got in it that said it was of God. None of them said, we're going to glorify Jesus and go to the moon, and we're going to uh, come back and tell the people how great our God is. Nobody did that. Just like some Russian astronaut went up through space and came back, and they said, did you see God anywhere? No, we didn't see God anywhere. Well, you wouldn't expect a blind man to see a sunrise, would you? Now, let's continue the message. Giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God, when the sons of God came in under the daughters of men, boy, that makes a bad combination. You know what that is to me? It's an unsaved boy marrying, it's a saved boy marrying an unsaved girl. Or it's a saved girl marrying an unsaved boy. I talked to these little old girls the last few weeks, and they said, well, I, I'm going to marry him. Well, I said, is he saved? No, he's not saved, but I love him. I said, sister, you're in a Christian heartache. Of course, when you talk like that, I don't think they're saved either. I think you're most saved in the bad boom. You, your spirit's not right. Your attitude, you're so rebellious. Who don't care what mother and daddy said. I'm going to marry him. I'll have him. That's what old Samson said, wasn't it? And I'll tell you one thing. He lost all of his power and wound up blind, grinding at the mill while old Delilah was up there having a big dance and celebration of his downfall. You better let that bunch of unsaved rascals alone. You girls better pay a little attention. I'll tell you one thing. You better not go with anybody that you couldn't afford to marry. Sons of God saw the daughters of men. They said, well, let's get married. They're going to have intermarriage between God's people and the devil's people. And that causes great trouble among the children. And let me tell you something, young lady and young man. If you intend to have an unsaved marriage, or what you call a half and half, you better pray if you've got any power with God and ask for no children. 
This is the generation, you know, of the pill and birth control. I tell you the birth control that got us, and that's the new birth control. Brother, we've, we've had too much birth control in the pulpits. I mean the new birth, the virgin birth. I mean that's the birth control that paralyzed us right there because people won't get saved. And if you can't get somebody saved, you can't straighten them out to save your life. Now, are you ready for the conversation I had today? The lady said, Brother Olaf, is this America? I know I'm on the radio, but it needs to be said. We're in the final days of liberty. The government has moved in on the farmer. He's moved in on the cattle raiser. They've moved in on the home now. They've moved into everything. I mean, H-E-W, health, education, and welfare. And they're buying their way. And people are selling themselves into political slavery. In the sixth chapter, let's read on just a little piece further. With giants in the earth, there we got them now. Intellectual giants and financial giants and religious giants and also all that when the sons of God. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. And God saw, that's right, God turned on his television set. And don't you think he hadn't got it on now? Man thinks he's smart enough to build a radar screen. Brother Elisha had one back in his day. That's right. That little old flashing button, you know, up there that says um, the transponder's working. They're watching you. You're not coming across here without us seeing you. If you get off of that airway, four miles on each side, eight miles wide, you get over there five miles to the right of it, they're going to say, 3295 Romeo, you're bearing a little far to the right. You better get back in the road. Oh, listen, we got men of renown now. I mean, they can watch, but let me tell you something. The thing that's killing us, we haven't been able to see God. We don't have a spiritual radar screen. I was going down in the coast a while ago, Brother Elliam, and I saw that old deal on one of those tugboats turning around. That's radar, isn't it? Yeah. You have radar on all your boats, don't you? Four of them. Four of your boats. Radar. Dark of the night. Or the dark of the fog, that old radar says, look out. There's something out there in front of you. You better watch it. Man's pretty smart, but let me tell you something. He's sure in the dark when it comes to seeing God. He wouldn't, meet, he wouldn't know Jesus if he met him in the middle of the road. Talking about Noah's day, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Continually are we there. And he repented the Lord. And it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. It grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy what? Man. You say, why man? Man's the one that's guilty. And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I've made them. But here's your bright spot right here. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's what I found. Now, these are the generations of Noah. Noah had, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Now, that means he trusted in the Lord. Noah walked with God. How he walked with God, by faith. Noah walked with God. Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh should come before me. For the earth, earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And he told him how to make it. Now then, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Violence shall cover the face of the earth. We're there. We're there. Violence. Violence in the home. Threats of violence. 
You know, I was thinking there was a time when the enemy came, the Assyrian army came down to get one preacher. The preacher's name was Elisha. The preacher had a good night's rest, woke up uh, the next morning, and the enemy was everywhere. I mean, the enemy was just, just laying everywhere. I mean, he was outnumbered, overpowered physically, and they'd come to kill him. They'd come to get rid of Brother Elisha. Now, what happened? When Elisha started down to meet his enemy, he and his servant Gehazi, you know what he prayed? He said, Lord, just pull the Venetian blinds. And God pulled the blinds down over their eyes. And when he got down there, they were all blind. Captain, colonel, and every book private. They were all blind. I wouldn't have much trouble defeating a blind army, would you? And Elisha said, uh, I imagine, in his good-natured, faithful way, he said, good morning. I imagine the captain said, what's good about it? You're blind as bad. Well, he said, that's too bad. Have you all been having eye trouble before? Oh, no. We've had no eye trouble. Elisha could have said, well, I just don't know where. We could find enough optometrists to take care of all of you. But where are you going? Well, he said, we're down here looking for an old preacher. He said, we all came down here to get him. And he's been, uh, they tell me that he's got a radar screen. He's been seeing everything, hearing everything that we've been doing. And every time we come down to make an attack on his people, they're gone. He said, we've got to get him. Oh, he said, you're not in the right place. He said, I'd be glad. I know where he is, and I'll lead you right to him. Well, they said, we'd certainly appreciate him. You know, the devil's got pretty dumb, aren't they? <laughs> well, Elisha said, Captain, slip me your hand. And the old blind captain put his hand out. He didn't know he had a hold of the man he's looking for. I'm making an illustration. He led him right on up into the place where they didn't want to go. And the opposing king looked out of his palace window and said, Am I seeing right? There came God's preacher leading the whole Assyrian army right up, ready for slaughter. I mean, just like shooting chickens in the yard. I mean, <laughs> ducks on a pond. I mean, there they are. All of them coming right up just from. <laughs> yeah? Now then. The old king jumped over there and grabbed his big old sword and come running down there. And he said, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Tell me when to start. <laughs> Cut their heads off. The Elisha said, you won't do anything of the sort. And he said, what are we going to do? He said, you're going to go get breakfast ready for them. Now, I mean, I don't want any ballad biscuits. I want some homemade biscuits. I know because it said great provision. Ballad biscuits ain't no great provision. Anybody open that can. Never one get, never one knew any better. Open one of them things and boom, he hit the ceiling. Yeah. Power in them there biscuits, ain't they? Ah, <laughs> uh, listen. No, you're not going to smite them. We're going to feed them. They're hungry. These men have walked and traveled all night. And you think I'd take a man and put blind eyes on him and then kill him and take advantage of a blind army? I guess we won't. And Brother Raymond, you know, really, we're leading a blind army. We don't need to kill them. We need to cure them. We need to feed them. That's what I'm doing tonight. I wish y'all go ahead and eat. And I'll guarantee you, until you eat spiritual things, you're goners. You'll never make it. Oh, I know you say, I love sin. I love it. I intend to live in it if it kills me. And if I want to live my own life, why don't you let me? We don't want you to go to hell, little rebel. We don't want you to wreck your life and lay off down in a grass patch with O.D. and die. We don't want you to stand before the judgment bar of God and say, I never heard, I never had the chance. Oh, yes, you did. That goes for all of us. God's people. We ought to overcome them with the power of God and the love of God. They fed them, and the Bible said they went away into their own country and came no more. They didn't ever, they killed them with kindness. And that's our best way. 
It leaves no scars when you use love, just real love, compassionate love. The Bible said Noah walked with God, and it was a wicked day. And if he walked with God, and there wasn't another man walking with God outside his three boys, he's the only man, but he walked alone. Enoch walked with God in a wicked day just before the flood. And he was a type of the rapture. And the flood didn't catch Enoch on the earth. He'd already gone on home. And brother, I believe that we're a bunch of prospective Enoch's right here tonight. And we're fixing to take off for home before the flood of fire and judgment hits this old world. And anybody can see it's coming. I don't know how anybody can be so blind as not to see the pre-tribulation days that we're in right now. Violence and sin, homosexuality, rebellion, uh, unnatural affection, and God giving people up to reprobate minds so that they can't even retain God in their knowledge. And you're coming. I believe as sure as we're living, we're going to face, and we're, more and more, we're going to face reprobate minds. That means they said, I don't want God. I don't want the Word of God. I don't want your gospel. I don't care anything about your pure living. I'll not have it. And they keep on and keep on until God said, all right, you can have your reprobate mind. You'll never have another decent thought the rest of your life. And you wind up in hell thinking just the way you're thinking tonight. That's going to come. You watch and see. And I'm not so sure but what we've got some reprobate minds mixed up in this thing tonight. Violence and hatred and disobedience and rebellion, all of it is of the devil. And you're willing to be his yielded to. But the day's going to come when God can strike you blind. I'll tell you something else. There was a, a man. There was a king. And a young preacher came to see him one day. A young preacher came in. And uh, he said, uh, Oh, altar, altar. And uh, he rebuked the sacrifice of humans on the altar. The old king got mad about it. He raised his old hand and said, let me tell you something, you little twerp, you. And he raised his hand to kill him and had a stroke in his arm. And he couldn't pull it back. Try as he would, his arm would never bend. And he realized the power of God fell upon him. I believe that same thing could happen to a little old silly girl that gets a match in her hand and gets ready to strike it, God could paralyze your arm forever. And I wouldn't blame God if he did. Brother, that's depravity, and that's Noah's day. You are the signs of the coming of our Lord. You are fulfilling. I'll tell you something else he said. He's going to come when they think not. There's many people who have never had a thought, and there are many people who never have a decent thought. They're not going to be thinking. Listen. When Jesus comes, it's going to be a complete surprise to Corpus Christi. They'd never believe it. They'll drive by the people's church and the lights may go on. You say, that's strange. None of the grown people are left. But there might be some little lonely girl. I will it to you. You can have Miss Roloff in my house right over there. I won't need it anymore. I'll have something far better than that. Then you can just destroy everything you want to destroy. But remember this, your destruction is just ahead. I'm just telling you how it's going to be. The Bible said it's going to be like that. I want to talk to you a little bit about this. Noah had three sons. You reckon how much liberty they had? I imagine Brother Noah said, all right, Ham, Ham, Japheth, we're working on the ark today. Next morning he got up and he said, Ham, you go work the garden. We work on the ark. I don't imagine those boys ran around too much, do you? I don't imagine they had what you call liberty and freedom, but I tell you what they did have. They had a ticket and a passport in the ark. I imagine the boys and girls came by and said, huh, we got old man, old fuddy daddy, poor old ignorant, stupid fool. You know, I imagine if they'd had a state department, they'd have said, we ought to take those boys away from him. Got after making them slave, building a boat 100 miles from the closest water it'd take to float the ark. How crazy can a man be? Not as crazy as you think he is. And some of you think I'm a little crazy by telling you Jesus is just fixing to come, but he's coming. Whether you're ready or not ready, it won't make a lick of difference. Brother, he'll run right on time. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, don't feel sorry for them. 
I'll tell you something else. They did find them a nice girl apiece, but they only had one. And it just so happened that the four men that went in the ark all had just one wife apiece. And into the ark, God said one day, come, down Noah. Let me ask you this. Second, what the people thought about the ark. Don't you imagine he was a laughing stock, brother? Oh, was a laughing stock of all the people of his generation. That's about the way it is when you preach the coming of Christ. Did you know that I could not enter one out of ten churches in Corpus Christi and preach what I'm preaching tonight without being thrown out? I know what I'm talking about. I've been here 29 years. Did you know there are not many churches that let you preach on the coming of Jesus? They don't believe it. Would you let me tell you the story of a little boy? I've told it before, but my imagination sometimes runs. Little boy came up. Mr. Noah, what's he doing? Oh, he said, son, we're building an ark. What's an ark? Well, he said, son, it's going to be a big boat. And it's going to be a place when the flood comes. And we're going to get in, and we're going to stay in it till the flood is over, and we'll all be safe, and everybody on the outside of the ark is going to drown. I can see a little fella just, I mean, just literally blaze with consternation and amazement. You don't mean it. Oh, yes, son, I do mean it, too. He said, I never heard of such a thing. But he said, son, I'm telling you the truth now. Well, he said, I'll tell you what, I, I need to be in there, don't I? He said, you sure do, son. And we'll build enough room for you. You've got to believe, though, that sin is real. Judgment's coming, and the ark is the only place to hide. That's the gospel. Little boy said, I talked to Daddy about it. Beat it down the side of the hill that day when Daddy came in from his big shop or business or office or his executive position. Little boy said, Dad, have you ever met Mr. Noah? Mr. Noah. You mean that old man up the hill there? Yes, sir. He said, listen, that old man's crazy. You haven't been up there, have you? Yes, sir. That's a religious nut. Son, listen. Do you realize that he says it's coming a flood and the only place he hides that boat he's building up there, he never built a boat before in his life, and it's 100 miles from water to take the float to thing. Son, let me tell you something. There's never been a drop of rain falling on the earth, never been a clap of thunder, never been a, 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 a streak of jagged. Now listen, don't you ever go up there again. You understand that? The little old boy said yes, sir, but I know one thing. He seemed like a good man. He just stopped working long enough to tell me all about it. And that is, I know you don't believe it, but I just kind of believe the way things are getting, the way they're looking. We might need a place to hide one of these days. And he said, you better mind me, son. And sure enough, are you listening? One day, when the ark was finished with gopher wood and pitch within and without with pitch, and that pitch means the blood, that's the propitiation for us right there. You read about it in the New Testament. He is the propitiation. God, I think, stood on the edge of that old hill of sin and looked down across a wicked, ungodly nation. Imaginations of their hearts were evil always continually. I'm sure the music was bad. Adultery, sin, filth, illicit marriages relate all of it. That was homosexuality. I guarantee you it's homosexuality. That's part, not only in lost day. Not only in Lot's day, but all of those sins had come up and boiled up. God said, the end is here. And one day, God said, Noah, I'm going to give an invitation. He said, come thou, Noah. And Noah didn't argue. Noah didn't say, wait a while. Noah didn't say, I got to run an errand. Noah didn't say, I got to finish up. Listen, the Bible said, and Noah went in the ark. And behind Noah came three boys. And behind three boys came three wives. And then in came Mrs. Noah. That's eight souls. Eight souls, that's all. You say, Brother well, Walk, mighty few. Yeah, I know. But I tell you what, it's a whole family. And that shows you what you can do when you live right. You can win your family to Christ. You daddy sitting out there, I guarantee you, if you'll live right and pray right, read the Bible to your family, you'll win that family to Christ. We've turned too much of it over to the women. Men run loose in the world with their evil habits and with their rebellion and with their worldliness and say, all right, wife, you take them to Sunday school or something else. Brother, 
men need to be the leaders. And you pay the price for not leading your boy or your daughter. The husband is to be the head, the spiritual head of the home. Let's see the story now. They walked in. It wasn't in the rain for seven days. They didn't go through the water to get in the ark. They went in dry shod. And the Bible said, and it's there in the seventh chapter, and the Lord shut the door. Did you realize there's another door fixing to shut now, and it's going to be the door of grace? The church door is closing. We've had the church in the world for nearly 2,000 years, and now we've got the world in the church. And the old church used to wear modestly her righteous clothes, but not anymore. She played hands with the world, flirted with the world, and the world came in, and the churches became popular, but they've lost out with God. And Ichabod's been written on the door. The glory's gone. Power's gone. It used to be a time when the church was sort of a sheepfold. Now then it's a menagerie. You got everything in town in it. Just come on and join. Come on and join. I sing the song, you know, come and dine. But a lot of people sing come and dine. Just come on and join. Anytime. Just come on in. We'll be glad to have you. The old church is weak and wicked in the world every day. I'll tell you something else. It's easier to build. You'll build the wrong kind of church faster than you will the right kind. Now think about this. Uh, hamsters. You ever seen a hamster? A little old ratty looking outfit? A hamster. Man, you can raise hamsters a lot faster than you can horses, but what you got when you get through hamsters are rats. Isn't that it? And you can raise up a church that's full a lot quicker because the world will help you. But I tell you, they'll give you no help in building a spiritual church. No, sir. I just dropped something to you. And, brother, don't think that I'm complaining because unless God draws them, they can't come in here. Can you imagine anybody having $2 million worth of improvements in miraculous buildings. The big two-story, the two-story school, and then this auditorium, and do it all in one year's time, and yet no television set, set wanted, or, or Satan wanted the story. No newspaper gave a write-up so far as coming out the editorial writer or the feature writer and said, Brother Wall, this is fantastic. This is absolutely amazing to think you think somebody wanted the story? Nah, they don't want that stand we're taking. And you think I'm going to flirt with that bunch? Why, they can have their garbage sheet and run with it. If I ever get one, it'll just be to wrap the garbage in. You say, that's the reason you don't. I don't depend on the world's publicity, buddy. If God doesn't see us through, we won't go through. I don't imagine Noah got too much publicity. I don't imagine the uh, uh, photographers from the nearby city came to photograph his unless they did it in mockery. But I'm not through yet. Don't feel too sorry for Brother Noah here. I mean, don't send him messages of condolence to Shem, Ham, and James. Says, Poor little Noah boy. Don't worry about them. They'll be all right. They'll be alive when that bunch of rock and rollers are dead. And so one day, after they got in the ark, boom, boom, boom. What's that? First clap in the history of the world. God thunders his wrath against a dirty world. Little children run to mother and said, Mother, what was that? What is that? Coming from up yonder in that old cloud. I don't know, son. I don't know. And about that time, a gray streak of fire whipped across the heaven and played from cloud to ground and cloud to cloud. And little child ran and said, Mama! The heavens are on fire. And the mother was just as scared as the little child. That's the way you're going to be when Jesus winds this thing up. Oh, I know you're brave now. Don't make me any difference. If I go to hell, I'll go to hell. I'll at least be with my crowd. Yeah, Tuffy. You wait, bud. God will tenderize your rebellious soul on these days. You think you're, getting, you're not getting by with anything. God's going to have the last word. The little children began to run to mother and daddy, I see him now, coming home from the office. Oh, brother. He closed his office, told his secretary, said, beat it, there's something strange happening. 
Rain, big drops of rain falling. Falling, falling, falling. And visibility went to zero. And the people begin to climb hills. And the husbands desperately begin to wrap their families up and head up the hill. No umbrellas in those days because you never had had a rain. No storm fellas, Brother Raymond, because they never had a storm. Nobody was ready. Oh, wait a minute. There was somebody ready. But they're inside the ark. And up the hills they go, climbing, crying, pleading, little children being sucked out in the undercurrent. And mother screaming and said, I couldn't hold him. I couldn't hold him. Go! But daddy said, well, let's save all we can. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And up the hills. You think, brother, I'm making up something. I'll guarantee you, there's been proved by everybody there's been a flood on this country and all over the world. There's marine life on the top of the mountain. How'd it get up there, huh? You think a big fish decided to climb mountains? Come on, don't be that silly. I'll tell you how he got up there. He got up in the water. Right up there in the flood. No doubt about that, buddy. It's been proved. They don't have to show me the ark. They say she's in a frozen position and so forth and condition and one of these days we'll get to look. I don't have to look at it. All I got to do is look at Genesis chapter 6 and 7. I got her made. We need to be warned that judgment is coming and it's coming soon. Now then, let's get the picture. Families are together. They're plotting, planning, and no need. It's all over now. There's no way. But I see a little boy. He's not a little boy anymore. He's grown. And the old heads are together. And they're really plotting. I mean, food is scarce and folks are hungry. Starving. And there they are. Maybe two or three men inside saying, fellas, what do you think we can do now? What can we do now? I mean, I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know where we can go. The water's coming, still raining, flood's rising. And about that time, the door opened. And the little boy came in and said, Dad, you remember the old man, Noah? You remember that? Yes, son. He said, Dad, do you suppose this is what he told me about? You remember what I told you when I came? He said the flood is coming, and everybody outside the ark can wash away. Is this it? The wild-eyed daddy looked at each other and he said, well, son, it could be. And then it's time for the boy to speak, isn't it? Daddy, let me tell you something. If you'd have let me, I'd have been in the ark right now. And when I drown, and you see my body come floating by, it's because you made fun of God's preacher. You better be careful, little girl. You better be careful. I'll guarantee you these. You say, well, my preacher don't preach. That may be the reason you're in the shape you're in right now, too. If he'd have preached to you and a warned you and presented Jesus Christ to you, maybe you'd have gotten saved and would never come here in the first place. But since you're here, we want you to be saved. We're going to invite you into the ark to come to Jesus. He's our ark. Noah, Mrs. Noah, Jim, Ham, and Japheth, their three precious wives are floating on top. And you can't imagine. I, I think without a doubt, I can see the people coming up the hillside. I really think I can. Doesn't strain my imagination at all. Hey, Mr. Noah! Mr. Noah! Hey! Who shut the door? God closed it. Noah had nothing to do with the door. Neither do I. And brother, when God sits, when God closes the door, it's closed. But I got good news for you. I believe it's open tonight. For he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, will open the door, I'll come in and sup with him, and he with me. Here's the thing that's sad, and yet you girls seem to be coming to life, a lot of you new ones, you're listening, and that's good. But did you know you can preach like this, and sometimes people will sleep right through the message. You know why? Dead in trespasses and in sin. The devil has done his deadening work on the mind. He's blacked them out. He's left that depraved and reprobate mind that cannot think about the Lord. 
Now you say, Brother Wolf, what's the final application? Here it is. The flood's coming. The Bible told me in the book of Thessalonians, there's a flood of fire coming to purify and purge this earth. It's coming a time of tribulation such as the world has never known or will never know again. And there's going to be a battle of Armageddon, and uh, there's going to be an invasion of the devil and his crowd against everything that's decent and right. There's going to be a tremendous rupture. I mean, the people are going to hate God. And the Bible said blood will come up to the horse's bridle. And it'll take months to bury the beast. You say, can't be. Oh, yes, it can be, because God said it would be. You say, but Brother Olaf, don't you have a bright picture for us? Indeed, I do. And I'm glad you've asked for it. Just before all of this junk breaks out, Christians, are going to be lifted out. And we're going to be raptured, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the Bible said, comfort ye one another with these words. And so that's our hope, and that's our blessed hope. Yes, Jesus is coming again, and it'll be soon. He said everything would fail. Legislation, education, denomination, Integration, recreation, name it. It's all failed to lift man from his sinful state. And Jesus is now ready to come and take out for himself. And we're going to hear the Eliezer call one of these days pretty soon now. Call him the church home. And I do not believe that any of us will die if Jesus comes. Why we're living. We don't have to die. We'll be caught up. The Bible said, Then they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds with, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And oh joy, oh delight, should he come without dying. No sickness, no dread, no fear, and no crying. Caught up in the cloud, with our Lord up in glory, when Jesus receives his own. Oh, Lord Jesus, hello, hello, and we shout that glad song. Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. I thought of the chapter, and I've got to close with this, in the book of Judges. This is one of the loneliest pictures that's ever been recorded. You talk about despair, talk about loneliness. It's a mother like a lot of mothers today, look out of the Venetian blinds to see, is my daughter coming up the sidewalk, but she didn't come. Is my wandering boy going to come home tonight? No, you'll not make it. Here's the story of a man, one of the great generals of his day. He had a mighty, mighty army. His name was Sisera. Judges, chapter 5, verse 27. And 28, at her feet he bowed. That's right, he bowed at the wrong altar. At her feet he bowed. He fell. He lay down. At her feet he bowed. He fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. What are you bowing to tonight? Is it lust, sin, dope, filth, disobedience? There's where he said you would die. And he fell dead. Now, verse 28, is that sweet, precious mother, the mother of Sisera, looked out of the window and cried through the lattice of the Venetian blind. Why is this chariot so long in coming? Why tear the wheel of his chariot? Why can't I hear those big wheels turning? Why can't I hear the prancing of the horse's feet? 
my son Sisera has never failed to come home. Greatest soldier, I know my son. And she looked hour after hour and day after day to see if her son was coming. Dear friends, he'll never come. He's been killed. But I'm thankful to God our Sisera hadn't been killed. Thank God our Savior will come rolling in his big carriage. And I'm going to get on board little Susan and ride home with him. That's our hope. Thank you for joining us today on the Family Altar Program with Lester Roloff. You may listen to the preaching and the special music of the Family Altar Program 24 hours a day when you visit our ministry website, roloff.org. We love hearing from our listeners. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, please write to us at Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 855 Again, that's Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises, P.O. Box 100, Fort Thomas, Arizona, 85536. This broadcast is made possible by the prayers and financial support of listeners like you. Thank you for partnering with us, and remember that Christ is the answer.